Start with a clear stage, guys, and let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, we, the board appointed to inquire into and report upon the present condition and management of the Corrandirk Aboriginal Reserve, are about to commence our proceedings. The play is based entirely um, on the minutes of evidence of um, the 1881 Corrandirk Inquiry, which was a parliamentary inquiry that took place in Victoria. To investigate accusations brought by the natives of the Corrandirk Aboriginal Reserve against their superintendent, Mr Strickland. I work together with Andrew James, who's a Yorta Yorta playwright. I come from a historian background, Andrew comes from a playwright background, and of course an Aboriginal background. So by bringing those th two things together, we really aim to create a script which would both be his good history and also at the same time good uh, theatre. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated and let us commence. John Green was a lay preacher from Scotland and he came along with his wife Mary. They established Corrandirk in 1863 together with Barak and Simon Wonga and other Kulin refugees from other clans that had been uh, dispossessed of their own land. They all came together and settled in, at Corrandirk just outside Healesville. And what was happening on Corrandirk was an anomaly because John Green and uh, William Barak and the community of Corrandirk had forged a unique relationship uh, based on mutual respect. I find if you, if you put the Aboriginal into the equation, they will strive to keep their own law. And that is where I feel you have failed. He's got such a modern voice in a way, you know, and I was really surprised to, to hear a voice back then in the, you know, 1880, whatever we were, you know. I mean, it's so modern, you could, he could be there now and so brave. Do you find them truthful on the whole? Yes, very, and honest. I never, I never missed a fig of tobacco from the store. Which of the two, the, the real blacks or the half cars uh, did you find the, the most, the, the, the best workers? Never found any difference. These Aboriginal people, along with John Green, were able to be totally self-sufficient out there. No, you know, have no, no reliance on, on anybody else other than the work that they did out at Corrandirk. That first year, I cut with the Aboriginals 26,000 hot poles. The second year, 16,000 also with the Aboriginals. In 1874, we picked nearly eight tonne. With only the blacks working. Yeah, only the blacks working. And those hops, they earned over a thousand pounds. In 1874, the Board for the Protection of Aborigines decided that Corrandoke was a threat to, um, to the landed interests of uh, white settlers. And by this stage, um, White settlement was spreading very fast across Victoria and Corrandirk, which had, was once established quite far from white settlement, was now virtually surrounded by um, white farms who were very, had their eye on this fertile plot of land and they, they wanted it. Um, so they tried to uh, convince John Green to remove uh, the population. They knew that uh, only he could do it because of the special connection that he had to the people. See, I thought it would be most cruel to move them because many of them they come there as children, yet being taught that this would be their home if they would stay and work. So I was dismissed because I wouldn't be a party to moving the Aboriginals from Coronary. When he moved out and Strickland came in, he didn't have the people skills to deal with the Aboriginal people at Corrandirk. Are they good workers as a rule? They are not. The treatment wasn't good, so the Aboriginal people decided to, you know, write letters and petitions, petitioning to get John Green back, so that they could, you know, continue to be self-sufficient. We would like it if the government leave us here, give us this ground, and let us work Corrandirk and get all the money. For Aboriginal people to to be heard back then is, is, was amazing. If all these people on this, on this board at this hearing were redneck racists, it would have been thrown out. And to hear some of the things that the white fellas say, um, which are the words of the day, is, is, you know, I dropped my jaw. It was empowering and inspiring to hear the words um, 
of William Buttock and the Aboriginal people of Corrindirk and just how, how you know, politically savvy they were at that time. Why not let the people do it themselves? Why don't those white fellas who want to break this station go to try and break some of the squatter stations? Back at, at that time, in those circumstances, for Aboriginal people to question their, 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 um, their so-called overseers and reformers uh, could, had, you know, came with heavy penalties. Um, families could be split apart, rations could be cut, uh, children could be removed from, the, from, from parents, parents could be sent off to another reserve all the way to Lake Tyres. Um, so the penalties, the risks, the stakes were very high. The squatters have got more ground in Victoria than we have. We've only got a little piece. White fellas ought to leave us alone. They wouldn't like us to come down to take their land from them and move them out of their homes. We are in Christian land. And we ought to love one another with brotherly love. For the Aboriginal people of Corrindirk to win the right to stay there at Corrindirk in the 1800s is, was nearly unheard of. So it was a, a, a very proud moment in Aboriginal history. It still serves today as an example um, for how things could be managed. Um, you know, if, if one looks at the Northern Territory intervention today and takes Corrindirk as an example, um, we can see that in fact 130 years later, um, relationship between uh, non-Aboriginal and Aboriginal people still hasn't progressed that much from Corrindirk in terms of the lack of consultation, in terms of, of lack of respect. Um, and uh, that example is there and we can draw upon it any time and if we implement some of the examples of Corrindirk, um, the potential to change things in the country is still very much present. I was inspired and empowered by watching this show, just seeing Aboriginal people and white people work together in 1881, you know, that's, that's, that's a story that has got to be celebrated.